Hi, this is Richard Hazler, proud principal of Pequannock Valley School, a grade six through eight school in Pompton Plains, New Jersey, as part of the Pequannock Township School District. And welcome to this week's episode of Learning Sparks, where we learn and grow together, talking about instructional strategies that enhance student learning in your classrooms. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a strategy that I feel is essential for students to spark student learning in your classroom, and that's effective parent communication. While it may not be a strategy like direct instruction or cooperative learning, it can have long-lasting effects for your success as a teacher and the success of the students that you serve. So let's talk about effective parent communication in this week's episode of Learning Sparks. When you talk about what we expect from parents as teachers and administrators, I think we all hope that parents will be involved in their children's education and accept the responsibilities that come with being a parent. I think we all hope that parents will provide resources for their children at home on reading and mathematics and writing and all of the other content that goes along with what the students are learning. I think we all hope that parents will set a good example for their children. I think we all hope that parents will encourage their children to do their very best at school. I think we all hope that parents will emphasize the importance of academics with their children. I think we all hope that parents will be proactive and inform of us of anything that we need to know about their children so that we can help them when they're here with us in school. I think it also holds true for the parents of expectations that they have for us as teachers and administrators. I think that parents all hope that we're going to keep their children safe while the children are here with us in school. I think they all hope that we're going to treat their children fairly. I think they all hope that we're going to teach the material that the students need to be successful. I think they all hope that we're going to communicate early about any problems that may arise or situations that they need to address at home with their children. I think they all hope that we're going to be enthusiastic and energetic and passionate about what we teach and about their children. I think they all hope we're going to respect their rights as a parent. I think they all hope that we're, we're here to understand that it's a total school experience and it's not just about a particular class. And I think they all hope that we're going to be consistent in our teaching methods, in our expectations, and in what we do to do what's best for kids. Because the benefits to effective parent communication are many. There's definitely an improvement in student achievement when there's positive homeschool relationships. There's attendance improvement, there's behavior improvement, there's increased motivation for students to want to learn and to want to attend school. There's a more positive attitude by the students when they see that we're working together for their success. And ultimately, there's more support at home. When teachers and parents are informed about what's happening at home and at school, it's easier for both of them to work hard to benefit their children. I came across a quote by George Bernard Shaw that I think is pretty important to think about when you think about communication. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it's taken place. I think very often if teachers or parents send an email, they think that the other person is reading it and interpreting it the way that it's meant. If there's a phone call and a message is left that says, can you please call me back? We assume that that, that person gets that message. It's very important that as teachers and administrators, we follow through in the communication with parents. Because when you're communicating effectively with parents, I believe that there are six strategies that we need to implement to make sure that our communication is effective. The first one is we need to build relationships. Making sure that parents know who we are and why we're doing what we're doing for kids is critically important. We should be reaching out to three to four parents at least a week and contacting them and letting them know how their children are doing in our classrooms. If we do that on a regular basis, you're reaching out to parents consistently and you're building those relationships. Reaching out to one parent one time a year and letting them know what's happening in the classroom doesn't tell them about the other 179 days that you may have that student. So communicate with that parent and build that relationship. The second piece of information to build positive parent, effective parent communication is to communicate often. As I mentioned earlier, we should be communicating on a regular basis, particularly with students who may be struggling in the classroom. It's not always a negative phone call. It could be something positive that the child did well, but asking the parent for support. So communicate often. Another thing that you should know about effective parent communication to help you is to document when you call. 
I know it's, it's a busy time, you have a lot of things going on, but you should keep a, a running record of the number of calls you make to certain parents. You also want to make sure when you look over that record that you've communicated with every parent because you may look down your list and say, wow, I didn't talk to John's parents yet. So you can reach out to them. Document every, every communication that you have so that if you do have a parent meeting or you need to, to send an email, you can reference the conversations that you've had. Another way to improve parent communication is to build trust. Let them know who you are. Let them know what you're passionate about as a teacher. You don't have to give out all your personal information, but let them know who you are because when they can relate to you, they're going to build trust and they're going to they're going to want to know and and feel comfortable that their child will be safe and will be working hard for you in their classrooms. Also something about about effective parent communication is that Teachers and administrators, we are going to make mistakes sometimes. We may not post something on time online. Um, we may make a mistake in our grading practices. It's important for us as teachers and administrators to own those mistakes. We want to model that with our students. We want our students to be owning when they make a mistake, so we should do the same thing. With effective parent communication, we also don't want to be defensive. We want to be confident in what we're talking about. So prior to an email or a phone conversation or a parent conference, Write out what you're going to talk about so that you know exactly what it is that you're going to be sharing with the parents. Because building positive relationships with them, communicating often, is critically important to student success. All of the lesson planning and instructional strategies that you do may not work effectively if you don't have a positive relationship with the parents at home. So I encourage you to communicate often, pick up a phone, and, and call tomorrow and to a, to a parent of a student that is doing really well and start off with a positive phone call. And I can tell you that learning will not only improve, but you'll see students working even harder for you because they know that you're there for them. So I look forward to continuing to learn and grow with you here on Learning Sparks. You can follow me at Rich Hazler on Twitter and uh, continue to grow your PLN. But always, always, always do what's best for kids. Have a great day, everybody.